Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to a, a, a time when we test things, even though, and here's an unnecessary disclaimer, or perhaps it will work the other way, and increase the level of intrigue. We are testing a tire today. We have tested this tire before, but we haven't. We have tested it before, but we haven't. In a variety of sizes, I've been vocal about how it is my, probably my favorite overall tire. I will always have a soft spot for the Canyon Trail, but I have a softer spot for a particular tire made in J Concepts Green. That is, ordinarily, uh, this one right here, the Tusk. This is the 1.9 Tusk. We have also tested the 2.2 Tusk. We've tested the Fake Tusk. We've tested the 3.93 Tusk. You'd think we were running out of tusks, but J Concepts uh, uh, jumped up and said, uh, nay, nay, sir. Green Compound 5.25 OD for all, and <laughs> I love how they put the, the, the MSRP number there. I think they were $33 a pair because they are this big. And uh, if we have no nothing to size for reference, there you go. These are the LP Tusk, which we have to assume is a direct response to tires like the Hyrax LP. You will notice that width-wise, they are effectively the same width as a 1.9 Tusk. What are the sidewalls on the Tusk? Yeah, 4.75 by 1.75, 5.25 by 1.75. So these are for the class three gents is my presumption. Uh, but in my mind, they are also for anybody that is running a Tutu Canyon trail and are not crazy about the oh, width of a Tutu Canyon trail. We're talking 55 millimeters wide, somewhere around there, 55, 57. So yeah, we're a half an inch narrower on Tusk LPs. Now, disclosures before we get to the mounting and then the part about the testing. I am going to mount these on the included foam, which is softer than a medium. It, it is indeed. These are, these are soft. Or perhaps it's a medium and it just, no, it's definitely softer than a medium. It is perhaps a foam intended for this. They must have had to source new foams because a typical 1.9 foam is obviously going to be too small and a typical 2.2 foam is going to be too big. This foam strikes me as less dense than the foam that comes in a 2.2 rupture, 2.2 tusk. Those are a bit firmer. So they're definitely aiming for someone with this. Now, we're going to test it on this because there are too many different permutations that could be going in these. What will fit in these? You could you could throw some sort of uh, crawler innovation design for this specific size of tire in there. You could indeed fit the foam from a 2-2 Canyon Trail, which is a nice dual stage. You would probably just want to trim it down a little bit. You could put some sort of expensive Three Brothers 3D printed dual stage operation in there. So the end user has a number of options and depending on what rig they are firing them onto their choice of this is probably not going to be the same as the choice of this guy or that guy or myself i went through a long debate over who was going to test these it can't be baseline it can't be nobody is putting we're not building a high performance high trail Enduro, <laughs> Sendero SE. And so if I'm going to run a Tusk on an Enduro, I'm going to run a 1.9 Tusk. I'm going to put this tire on it. I'm never going to put that tire on it. This tire is for truggies, is for pinched bodies. It's for guys that are like, performance, man, performance. It is also, I think, aimed right at the cut and shut crowd because the cut and shut crowd is basically trying to make this they're cutting apart megalithics and tusks and whatever and making them big but skinny i don't know if this is skinny enough for those people that 
that seek that seek only the thinness. But uh, but here we are. These are uh, authoritatively J Concepts green. Very, mucho sticky. We have three mounted. I am looking at them right now. I am making sure. Uh, what a what a lovely day. All of the green dots face inside. So we got two inners, two outers. Now uh, again. When I say that my selections, my selection of foam, which is the included foam, and my selection of wheel, which is your typical Amazon 35 millimeter ring, other people are probably going to go with something narrower, probably a fair bit narrower. So you're mounting, well, your mounting might be more difficult. It might not be. Uh, these are insanely easy to mount because... We've got a tire that is 47-ish, well, well, we'll we'll measure it, 47-ish millimeters on the outside, and we've got a beadlock ring that's 35 millimeters. So we have to do very little compression to compress these in place, and a 2-2 beadlock ring is so enormous that mounting these, these are some of the easiest tires to mount once you basically get one screw started, uh, you're good. I, I mounted the other three. No juice, no nothing. We get a couple threads in, and then we just work our way around in a circle. If you're using something with like a 20-ish, what are they, like low, low to mid 20s, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have a bit of a harder time to get these together than with 35s. I don't mind them being on 35s. It's a, a I just mounted up a set of 40s, and as one might anticipate, they mount even more easily. I almost I almost well I kind of cursed myself when I said that we didn't have a problem mounting any of these, and I almost pushed a bead out by by driving the screw in a little too fast. But this is a very easy mount. It's not the easiest because we're a uh, single stage open cell foam. So they're a little poofy, a little floofy. And if you had any kind of molded foam, anything dual stage, uh, these are going to fall together. I kind of do a circular tightening pattern on these because I'm always afraid of turning it over and one of the beads having popped out. It's not a perfect mount, but for testing purposes. It, it should be absolutely fine. A little, little crisscross action. And uh, there you go. And I mounted it in the correct direction. And it, it's amazing because these two pairs, um, we haven't experienced recently. So there, there are two with green dots on the inside. And J Concepts Green. I love this compound. And uh, two green dots to the inside. Look at that. A little squeeze and then... Oh, one more. Ah, yes. Lovely. So, we need something pinched, tucked, truggy, what have you. My first thought was Ratchet, but he has those special fancy G-made lugs. And I was like, mm, I don't want to hassle with that. So I thought, who have we got that runs a five-ish inch tire that is also on single stage foams and even crazier than that I might I would like to point out let me, let me pop one of these off so this is a 2-2 rupture on a, a very familiar wheel I think um <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, when I looked at Yella, I said, oh, well, it's just, it's, it's going to be that, isn't it? Because that's, exa <laughs> that's exactly what he runs. So this, oh, the carbon fiber, the Amazon carbon fiber chassis makes it so that his sprung weight is very low. He's battery on servo on axle, so there's not... There's not a lot of weight. We're going to see. 
This is... Oh, that's all spider webs. Uh, this is a... <laughs> I would have to go back and check the archives. But I am unsure if Yella has ever tested... Has ever been a test guy before for anything other than when we did the video on the Amazon chassis. Which... Which I had bought the whole chassis kit. Here's some history that you didn't ask for. Uh, I had bought the whole chassis kit, uh, and I should have just bought the rails. Because it's all I used. I didn't use any of the other parts of the kit. Now, we use all parts of the Buffalo, so all those parts of the kit did end up getting used. They just didn't get used here. Right. Let's see if I can get these on and not have him collapse off of Susan here. So far, so good. I don't know what the... Oh, good. We don't have one mounted. Ooh. We're supposed to provide uh, some some rudimentary measurements in terms of height, width, and weight. But usually what we do is we just get ahead of ourselves and uh, we mount all four of the vehicle and then we forget to do it. Guess what we did this time? We remembered. Well, we remembered to remember to do it. Set this gentleman over here. We'll scooch Susan over a little bit. It's probably set to pounds. It is. We'll go grams because it's understood by more humans. 200 dead. 200. 200. Uh, that, yeah, 200. That is beyond acceptable. Uh, these are not weighted rings. This is just how the rims go. These aren't even very. These aren't even particularly heavy uh, rims at all. It's just a lot of empty space. Very close, very close. So it should feel about the same. So I mean, we're doing a lateral J concepts thing here. Are we indeed five and a quarter? We are one hundred and thirty-four millimeters, which is. I mean, that's five and a quarter. <laughs> that is 5.25 on on the nose. How well does it show? That is 5.25. Is the width what they say it is? It is 48 millimeters, which is one, one and 13 sixteenths. So it's about a sixteenth wider but I'm running the included foam. You can see the pooch out on the sides, and I'm running a wheel that is almost as wide as the tire. There's not a lot of tuck back of the lip there. So if you were running a narrower wheel, it might, it, it has the potential to narrow it out a little. I think, I mean, here's, here's what we're working with. For a 2.2, this is positively skinny. A 2.2 rupture is like 66 millimeters wide or something. A uh, two-point tusk is almost it, almost 60, 58, I want to say. Uh, these are 47. So for a 2.2, it's narrow. I know a lot of the skinny tire boys. Uh, for them, this might not be narrow enough. But uh, you will either learn to adapt... Or you will return to your cutting and shutting ways. We are going to do the Canyon Tire Test Protocol. The 10 stations, including wet at the end. We will, up we will apply a numerical score. No. Oh. Yella is effectively set up uh, for 4S. We can go very, very slow. I did not charge a 4S battery. I only have three S batteries charged. For, so for the purpose of this testing, he will be running 3S, which is fine. We're just going to lose wheel speed at the top, and we might lose a hair of steering torque as there is an RS500B in there, and it really doesn't come to life until it's on 4S. 
I mentioned I went back and forth and back and forth, and Ratchet was the guy that was in my head as we're going to do that. He is on two two canyon trails that have been cut and siped but are otherwise unmodified. They run on the stock foams and everything, and I was like, if we're going to move from an open cell foam to an open cell foam, let's do that. But then it occurred to me that this is probably an even better option. Yeah, this, this is definitely more firm than this. This is, ooh. So he might be the guy to test this. He is a very light boy. This is going to move him up vertically. Not a ton. Uh, it'll look easier to see there. Like, we're not talking that much bigger. And I do know that a lot of people have uh, have made it vocal that they don't like the rupture because it has that rounded shoulder. It doesn't look like, it looks more like a moon buggy tire than it would something that goes on a vehicle. And I get that. I'm with you. I love the Tusk. I will take the Tusk over a rupture. But the rupture is a fantastic tire. This is the same compound. I am, I am really anxious to see how these do. His clearance is in, in the ludicrous zone for a straight axle vehicle. So, five and a quarter Tusk LPs, 2.2 Tusk LPs. I think this will close the book on testing Tusks. I don't think they're going to come out with yet another size. So, although, wouldn't we love a 4.5 Tusk or like a 4.4 Tusk for the Portal Boys? Anyway, we will get the sheet, we will get the board, we will get the stuff, we will get the camera, we got the rig. We're going to go to where the rocks live and we're going to do the things. If you have any experience with Jake Concepts Green, uh, even down to the point of just having taken one out of a plastic bag, you would know that they are sticky, iggy, iggy, ooh-wee, uh, very sticky out of the package to the point that when they first drive the first time, you can see the little bed, may well, maybe you can see, the little bed area on the back of Yella is just full of debris. It throw, at a moderate walking pace as you drive across the ground, it is throwing stuff into the air, rooster tails off all four tires into the air, higher than the height of his roof. It's J Concepts Green. Do, will they need to get cleaned off? No. Absolutely no hesitation of any kind whatsoever. Straight over, straight from the dirt, straight over the bean. A absolutely no. no, no without pause come over here over the mini pull here we'll see we're gonna go straight for it it's a tough one to get over he's gonna do the shuttle too easily if we get that tire around that rock and over it there I want to see a cutback yeah there's the cutback take it as far right as you want it's a tusk but it's bigger we just gave yellow portals, is what we did. This tire is 12 millimeters taller than the 1.9 version of the Tusk, so he just got this, about the same lift as you would get from portals. He is very light, so these foams as, and the, the flex here is can just start to get that rear off the ground. So like break over right here should be improved. We're probably not even gonna touch, we're not. Try not to use dig, we'll just cut back without dig and yeah. It, it is exactly what it is. It's a tusk, but it's skinny. And it's, it's a 2-2 tusk that is shorter and skinnier. It, is it a perfect thing? If, if there's an opportunity to find weakness, we will find it. But what we have gotten here at Slick Rock is, I want to give it a 9.9. .9. I want to give it the highest score you can give it because a 10 doesn't exist. We are going to restrain ourselves though. Oh, but my, it's so good. There is that chance that the foam just happens to be perfect for his weight, because he's, he's pretty light. He's one of the lightest in the fleet. So maybe he is the perfect choice for this. I... 
Yeah, you know what? I'm, o I'm okay with a 9.8. Because it's not like it's just gonna pull every single angle in the line that you hit. If you're, if you're trying to get in a spot that you can't get, it's not gonna do it. If he had pulled this right here, so we've got this little overhang. There's a good shadow on it. Look at that shadow right there. It is beyond vertical. So we get the front over it, and then we get the rear right there. And that little hop. That right there. That right there. So, so close and falls back. That is the difference between a 9.8 and a 9.9. .9. That's the difference, that little bit right there. If he pulls, if he does all that other thing and pulls that, it's a 9.9 .9 and it's the best tire we've ever tested for pure forward drive. But as it is, it's a 9.8, .8, which puts it in the top 2% of tires that we've tested. To point out for those here for the first time, where we go to 10 stations, but we are testing a great number of things at each station. How far right do we, oh my God, there's, okay. We're now uh, beached and breached, belly high on that rock because that passenger tire, there's not supposed to be enough grip to try to ascend right there. Holy cow. Okay, we wanna stay in that groove further to the right you are, the better you're doing. We've got the initial view of breakover when we come over right here. How does the tire do there? Uh, we effectively gave him portals, so he's in half an inch tall. Well, not quite a half an inch taller, but he's a bit taller than he was before because he ran ruptures. This is what we call a gut shot. And there is so much drive in this tire once again, just about as good as you can do on both of those. We are going to come across here. What do we have in hesitation? Absolutely nothing. It was pure forward drive. I was actually slowing. I was, I was releasing off of the throttle as we got towards the top. I want to see one more. I want to see a straight take right here to where I don't get too far over because usually a tire will get mired down there. That driver rear is in a spot where it can't, it can't generate enough lateral movement to pull us out of that. So this is where we're seeing what can the tire do without the help of the geometry? I think if I nudge it a little more left, will it cut back? It's gonna cut back. Okay, we are in the same situation yet again at station number two where that is the difference between a 9.8 and a 9.9. .9. When that low side tire was in that little stuck on the bottom of that lip, if it pulls over that lip, that's a 9.9. .9. It doesn't pull over the lip, it's a 9.8. .9. Nonetheless, we are seeing what I would like to call numbers. We have an attack on the side hill, and at the end of that side hill is a transition. And the transition at the end of this side hill is called Yella's, because Yella is the one who kind of originally did it the best. Has he been passed? I don't know. That right there, we saw a little lightness in the passenger front, which I was able to steer through. I didn't have to counter steer to flatten it back down. This is a location of grip and slip. I'm, I'm one handing, we're not, I'm doing no steering input because I wanna see if it'll stay. And not only does it stay, when that tire lifted, it never felt light. We, I, I had no, I had no feeling of lightness. So I think what we've got, we have the potential here. We have a potential for, and okay, no, let, uh, let me clarify and re-clarify. 
I speak often and at some length about the relationship between the insert and the tire, how they work in, together in concert. In When we are speaking of things like single stage foams, and there have been some good ones, there have been some very good foam to tire relationships, this here strikes me now on the bucket, sitting on the bucket chair, this seems like the best collaboration between foam and rubber that we've pulled factory out of a package. You, you can improve some things, you're not gonna improve forward drive. Like your forward drive is going to get worse at the expense of some, uh, 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 you know, in exchange for something else that's basically, that's basically how it works. You have to give to get, there are no free lunches. It's to the point where I wanna see it again. That right there, that, ju that just, the ability to dial it to right where I want it. Okay, now what if I go in too hot and too hard? Okay, if I stay in that, I can, I can flip it. But you've got to get way past where you want to be. That is the best side hill performance. It is on par with a rupture, with a 1.9 rupture. And as the fitment of this tire is definitely in the same ballpark as a 1.9 rupture, like it's not going to fit everybody. There may be some, uh, some argument in the comments. It may be a point of contention. I don't know if I've ever given anything in side hilling above a 9.4. I'm gonna give this tire a 9.8 on the side hill because at no point did I ever feel like I had lost even 1% of control. When I drove into a line deeper than I should have, easily caught easily caught. I don't understand. I don't understand. Why is it? How is a 2.2 Tusk LP better than a 1.9 Tusk? This has been sort of an unofficial, but how good are you really test right here. So let's, let's get it lined up. The dead pull on the overhang here, there's a good shadow in it right there. That is the very tip of it is past vertical. It's like it has a little coping at the top. So the ability to push straight through this. We a little over soft for this? No, we're not. I, I had it. There it is right there. Just had to get into the right spot of the line. And then coming across the top is not a problem. And then look at the stability on descent. Wrapping it around. Points to be lost here. Oh my. I think had I hit the exact line. Right. Yeah. I'm just I'm just rubbing my eyes. I Okay, how about that? Right here. Well, I'm Here's what I'm doing. I'm trying to find a spot where it's not just singing, where it's not just like, whatever you try, I've got it. And, <sighs> it digs as well as a one nine tusk. These have no feather. They were in packages an hour ago. That ability to position right there is... It's almost unheard of. His stability is... I would guess that his wheel combos weigh significantly more than they do because, man... This could be, yes, there's always the possibility that Celestial Alchemy has occurred and we've just got that perfect combo. I am going to, it is going to be difficult for me to take these tires off of him and use them somewhere else. He might, he might have earned them and we are at what? What are we on? Station four? Station four of 10. Is that another 9.8? Yep. 
At this rate, I'm going to spend five plus minutes at each station. We're never going to finish. We're going to do the hit to the left. When we get up to here, we want to see how tight we can turn around. Okay. Now, uh, <laughs> the, the pendulum has swung back the other direction already. At station five, I'm no longer wowed. The, the wow factor has worn off, and now I feel like I'm cheating because I see no issue in how we're going to have to position here. No, it's just, it's making me rethink the 9.9 nine at, at Slick Rock. That's what it's making me rethink. It says the most drive of a tire that has been fitted to a wheel and fitted to a vehicle here. No matter what I do, it just goes, okay, easy. Now on the one hand, this is getting very easy for me. I don't even have to take the pen out of my pocket because I'll only need to take the pen out of my pocket to write down things that aren't 9.8s. Okay, what if you really, what if you really boof it and you, you go way too far this way? Will it flop nose or will we be able to pull it back? I see the spot, I see the line, it's there. Can we dig back over or is it drop too much? I think I've got the angled skid caught in a little bit. Good grief. Okay, if that, if that line of scent, that second one, if that didn't mean anything to you, I need you go back and rewatch it. I tried to do it one-handed, but I needed to do a little steering cutback. This is a terrible entry line, and I feel like it's, yep. Hi -yah. Well, now, now I'm just mad about it. Now it's just like, this is crawler's paradox stuff. All right, let's do the bump before I forget. I mean, we have so much, <laughs> there's so much drive here that like we don't need to bump right there that's an overhang and next to it is pure vertical taller than the height of the tire let's go even farther now we've got a little bit of link in and then as soon as we get the front end cleared up a little bit that's absurd Okay. Whee! Here's the thing. It's not going to bump great because, but it's not going to drop back either. Mm. So we get some energy return from the foam because if you squish that foam back, it's a real soft baby. It is a, I would say softer than medium soft, between a medium soft and a soft. So, but look, look how straight. There's no, there's no irregularity. And a lot of bumps I do without touching the steering wheel at all. Now, if I'm touching the steering wheel and I'm bumping more like a sane person, boop, the tiniest hop in the air. Oh my, my oh my oh my oh my oh my. Someone had asked in the comments somewhat recently, uh, how, well do you sell, how well does the Gozer self-write? Well, we're about to find out. Now, it's gonna be difficult to roll it. That is what a bump should look like. We'll do, we'll do one more of those. Because I can already tell when I see the attitude that the tire gets, look how high I have to go. I went too far. So a problem that some bodies have is that when you're really tapered in at the top like that, it it's possible and probable that you're going to roll yourself onto your, you're, you're going to go full turtle. So we, we steer to the sky and we reverse. 
that's what a bump should look like. That's what every, that's what every tire should, should bump like, and unfortunately they don't. Um, yeah, I stopped writing numbers down at Daphne's line because there's there's two opportunities left for this tire not to end with a there's going to be no math if you keep this up there's going to be no math this is not going to be helpful because what we have is we have a psi thing going on right now the foam the softness of the foam Oh, I hope a camera caught that. Man, I hope that wasn't out of frame. What we're supposed to be testing right here is the thing I like to call surface transition. And we might potentially be able to nose in right here. Okay, so this is just the fronts trying to pull a hard ledge while the rear is filled with dirt. And then right there, it's too much. We're bellied up. We're, we're not... We don't have a flat skid. We've got a stock element skid. Uh, we've got straightish links. So what we try to do is get right on the lip. I had I had that. Shouldn't have been able to get that, but I had it. Keep rolling. It just goes wheels, man. Any oblique on it, and and you're gonna pull across it. Transitionally, I can't tell you what it's going to do on really soft stuff. I can tell you that the level of stability is outrageous. This, this LP 2.2 is better than a 1.9 rupture. And that seems, that seems impossible. It seems impossible, but you're sitting there and I'm sitting here and collectively, togetherly, here we are. I can't, I can't knock the, I can't knock any, I can't ding any points. He know how, he now has one opportunity to not end up in a no math situation. Look at the dig. It just, agile, crisp, sharp. Let's get it wet. I don't think I have ever more wanted to see a shining wet performance than, than I do right now. Wanted to see, there was still, there was a little bit of dirt left on him. Let's try a middle cut back here around the outside of the beam. Let's grab that lip right there. Anywhere I want to put it, it will go. So there is there is one thing. I mean, it's 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 no math. There's going to be no math. Uh, if anybody out there thinks that this is going to pull a five on wet, what? Uh, I wet performance is viewed as a percentage review of its performance versus dry. Typically, a tire that has a high dry score is going to have a relatively high wet score. We've not seen a tire that's amazing in the dry fail completely in the wet. And I don't think this one is going to either. A little slide, get a little water on the tire. It's over the beam. What I'm looking at is basically slide back. Not like that is the, the, the motor getting overpowered a little. Yella is powered by uh, an AG Innovations Ninja, which is the size of a postage stamp. It's microscopic. So he gets a little rollback on his 1400 kV motor. But once we get a little bit of water distributed on the rock and on the tires, do you as a collective see very much difference between that and what it looked like when it was dry. Also, it's warm today. I can see the, the little rock, not, not the bean, but the rock above the, look, that, that rock is drying out already. It's a wet one. 
Yep. That performance on Wet Rock is better than many performances we have seen by many tires on Dry Rock. There's a solitary downside to this whole thing. I found in a store, if I, can I get this in frame? We can't really focus on that one, can we? There we go. I found fine tip dry erase markers. I use a little handmade dry erase board to do my scoring. And uh, I haven't written anything on it in like 25 minutes because the Tusk LP, the 2.2 J Concepts Tusk LP in green compound has achieved something today. It has achieved the no math scoring. Now I feel like it is our goal as testers of tires and other wonderful things to find the opposite no math tire. We need to find either the 75, which is a tire that does it but isn't very good at it, or the 50, which is the tire that can't do anything. I don't even think the Boom Racing Hustler got a, would, would get a 50. It would get a couple points on that. It, we saw 9.8, I wrote a couple down, I didn't write down the rest. This tire is a 98, it is a 9.8 average. It is about as good as you can do. There is a 9.9 .9 out there. And I think in if you were talking about an individual aspect tested at one of the individual stations, there are tires, this being one of them, that could get a, a 10 on a singular aspect. But those are almost discardable. Like, you know, we're scoring gymnastics, we throw away the high and the low. It's kind of that, which is why I don't give out 10s and I'm very wary of giving out a 9.9 .9 because in my convoluted, made up where the points don't really mean anything scoring system, a 9.9 .9 is effectively a 10 because I don't believe that a 10 is achievable. A 10 is perfection and 9.8 aggregate 98 has not been achieved and may not be achieved again i also think i'm uh, i'm I, I don't know about y'all but i am fine with a 98 because that is a 100 how many millimeters was it five point it was five and a quarter 130 odd whatever it was i can't remember this isn't going to fit on everything you can't fit the, if you've got full fenders, not with these you don't, but if you've got a gozer, I heard very little in the way of Lexan noises. If you've got a truggy, if you've got some sort of class three wasp mated with a spider abomination, go for it, man. Like these compared to what I'm, and I'm making quotes around this in the air, comp guys will run. These are downright economical particularly when they will spend probably as much on inserts for them as they do on the tires. I, I am, it was a roller coaster of emotions. These tires were messing with my emotions where I went from blown away to jaded, back to blown away again, back to just impressed overall. There is no physical change to these relative to a 1.9 Tusk other than this, the height. And I don't want to fall right into the giant pit of that's what she said, but I guess that that half inch makes all the difference. So <laughs> there's your takeaway, everybody. The 2.2 inch J Concepts Tusk LP is the best tire the Canyon has tested. I will, he's getting his battery unplugged and he's going into his garage. Yella, those are your tires now. Uh, use them well. Uh, it's going to be, yeah, oh, yeah, uh, cry for me, Argentina, as I have to, oh, now I have to figure out a rig to put 1.9 ruptures on. Oh, woe is me, right? So, man, the takeaway is to be blown away. I thank you so much for joining us here in the canyon. This one probably went on for a while because if the hyperbole starts flowing, it's going to flow for a while. I invite you to come back and see what we ever have, whatever we got in store next. I, uh, I, I, I ask you most kindly to please comment below if you have anything to add or if you have anything to take away or if there's something that I didn't cover that you would like me to address, I will let you know. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. 
We will see you next time. In between now and when we meet again. Who's one and all going to do your very best? Have a good winter, but we'll catch you next time. Yella, you're in the perfect position. How many times did he roll over? Was it one? I think he rolled over once. And that was my fault. Let's just do the slow poke off here. Not even with a dig. Just glued. Oh, wait, no. We're just going to end on this. Thanks for watching, everybody.